Hello my health savvy friends, it's Dr. Tom here and today we're going to be talking about ECGs on your smartwatch. Are they accurate? Should you be sharing them with your doctors? And one day we'll be using them to pick up on heart attacks. An ECG or electrocardiogram is a way of measuring the electrical activity in the heart. They're popping up on patches, watches, phones, but the original ECG is still done with 10 leads or cables placed across the chest to measure 12 different views of the heart. Imagine a fashion photographer moving around their subject to get 12 different angles for their photographs, and that's the kind of thing that an ECG aims to achieve. Instead of the cables, most smartwatches that take an ECG have a metallic plate at the back. When that plate comes into contact with, say, your left wrist, it's the equivalent of an ECG cable being attached to your left arm. You'll then often be asked to use your other hand, your right hand, to touch an area of metal on the watch, such as a button or the side of the watch, the bezel perhaps, and touching it with the right hand is the equivalent of placing a cable on the right hand. By doing this, you're able to measure the difference in electrical potential between the right and the left arm, giving you a view of the heart right to left. The fact that we can measure anything in the heart using just a wearable device is nothing short of wondrous. But the fact is, is that we're only getting a limited view of the heart, that kind of right to left view, and that means lots can still be missed. Therefore, smartwatches usually are only used for detecting problems with heart rhythm. By that I mean instead of your heart doing a regular bo boom bo boom bo boom it's kind of a bit all over the place, a bit of a bo boom ticka ticka bo boom bo boom bo boom goes fast, goes slow, skips a beat. Why is that a problem? Well, if your heart muscle isn't working in unison, and blood ends up pooling in the heart, it can form blood clots, and that becomes very dangerous. One of the commonest causes of your heart muscle not working regularly is a condition called atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, the top two chambers of your heart do not function properly, and the muscles there become very twitchy and they fibrillate. This increases the risk of blood clots forming, and if one of those blood clots leaves the heart and travels up towards the brain, they can become lodged there and block the blood supply, causing a stroke. It's thought that about one in five strokes are caused by atrial fibrillation, but this becomes that much more scary when you consider the one in four cases of atrial fibrillation are intermittent and many patients don't even realise that they have it. The potential value then for a smartwatch with an ECG becomes clear. If it can pick up this atrial fibrillation, then it might prevent us from having complications such as a stroke or a blood clot form. But are they actually accurate? Well, that depends on which device you end up going for. A recent comparative analysis of smartwatches on the market found that the Apple Watch 6 and the Galaxy Watch 3 picked up about 85% of cases of atrial fibrillation. That's compared to 58% for the Withings Scan Watch and 66% for the Fitbit Sense. All of them threw up false positives though, with a 1 in 4 chance of a normal reading being flagged as abnormal. The other big limitation of ECGs on your smartwatch is you have to actually know that you're in atrial fibrillation or that you have an abnormal heart rhythm when you do the ECG. Otherwise, you're likely to miss your symptoms. This is where Fitbit are really leading the way. Fitbit use two different approaches for measuring your heart rhythm. The first is the standard ECG approach I mentioned before, but the other one is more continuous and operates even while you're sleeping. Using a sensor at the back of the phone, the Fitbit Sense line continuously monitors the pulsing of the blood vessels. And using an algorithm that they've designed, they're able to detect with only a 2% false positive rate whether or not there is an irregularity in your heart rhythm. If users then get one of these notifications, they can then do a manual ECG to confirm. This is super exciting research, especially given that, as I said before, one in four cases of atrial fibrillation are intermittent, so many patients don't even know they have it. So the hope is that using this kind of sensor, we can pick up even more cases. However, the research that Fitbit have published around this needs validating. Not only did Fitbit sponsor and fund the research, which obviously introduces bias, but also, of all those people that didn't receive a notification, we don't know how many of them did end up going on to develop AF that was missed by Fitbit. So we don't know how accurate that continuous monitoring is at picking up 
atrial fibrillation or irregular heart rhythms. We just know that if it does pick it up, the false positive rate is very low. So if you get one of those notifications, you should definitely be acting on it. So what else could ECGs on smartwatches eventually do? Well, there's some evidence looking at whether they could pick up significant abnormalities in young, healthy adults. Those kind of abnormalities that can cause the heart to suddenly stop in young athletes and footballers. That would be revolutionary. And for some of these conditions, a smartwatch ECG can pick up 80% of cases. But there are some silent heart conditions where a single view of the heart just is not enough to pick up any of those cases. Other research has shown that 85% of ECGs from a smartwatch are good enough quality to detect if medications are infecting the electricity moving through the heart, helping to steer off potential heart problems in the future. But perhaps the most interesting question is, could a watch one day tell you if you're having a heart attack? Well, right now the answer is, not really. In fact, a watch-based ECG, that single angle photograph, is only good enough to pick up in 34% of cases the kind of changes you'd need to see to determine if you're having a heart attack or not. But researchers are exploring whether moving a watch to different areas of your body to get more views of the heart could in the future be used to detect heart attacks. It's thought that if you can move the watch around to obtain just three additional perspectives, that increases the accuracy of a smartwatch ECG to 77% when detecting heart attacks. Some researchers have taken this even further, showing that you can get six different views of the heart just using a single smartwatch placed on different areas of the body, achieving even greater accuracy at detecting some potential heart conditions. Now, when I heard this, I felt like I had to try it myself. So I did experiment putting the watch over different parts of my body and got six different leads, which you can see give six different perspectives on the electrical conductivity in my heart. Whether or not this is good enough quality to actually pick something up if I became unwell is another question. And I think until the evidence base is a bit more robust and thorough, I would not advise using a smartwatch ECG for this purpose. But it gives you an interesting idea of the shape of things to come. And I don't think we're too far away from you calling your GP surgery or NHS 111 and then asking you to submit multiple ECG readings from your smartwatch. So the key takeaway from today, is your ECG accurate? I think it's a screening device to pick up heart rhythm abnormalities you didn't know about before. Yes, it is a useful tool, but it is not accurate enough to confidently rule things out. So if you're feeling unwell, don't rely on your ECG on your watch to tell you you're fine. Always make sure you're seeing a healthcare professional. And if you do, should your doctor listen? Well, I think they should. The data that we're getting from these devices is really useful. And as a general practitioner working in the community, I don't have immediate access to an ECG at all times. That said, I don't think we're quite at the stage where I'll be asking you to put your watch to your abdomen and your chest to get some more readings, but I really do think that's just around the corner. Hope you found that video interesting. And if you did, please share it, like the video and subscribe. I want to grow this channel into a community for other people that want to take a more proactive part in their healthcare and I'll be doing more videos talking about healthcare products and digital health and things that you can do to stay healthy. So if there's any subjects you'd like to be covered or if there's any other feedback you have please message me or comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. That's it for now though and hope to see you at the next video.